Welcome to St. Jude's and thanks for joining us. It's, uh, it's great to have you here, whether you are a regular person in our congregation, whether you've been recently joining us for our services, or if you've come along to listen to part of our Foundational Root series um, that we'll be moving on through today and the next couple of weeks. We've already had three weeks of them so far. Uh, and they're all archived online if you want to pick up any of them at any time. There's a search for St. Jude's Church, uh, Plymouth, and you will find the YouTube videos that have already gone up. Today, we're looking at the topic of ministry as one of the main purposes of our lives as Christians and as of churches. Uh, and I'll come to that shortly after our reading that Gordon's bringing to us. We're going to start our time together though today in singing. And the song we're going to sing is Lord I Lift Your Name on High. It's a, it's a praise song. It's an opportunity to just acknowledge who God is and what he means to us. And it's a great way to move into a time together where we concentrate on him. When we get to the very end of our purposes, the last of the purposes that we look at is about worship and of acknowledging who God is and what he's done for us is a great place to be. And as we, uh, as we recognize how great God is, we also recognize actually who we are in relation to him. And we know we don't always get things right. Uh, we, we need to ask for forgiveness for things that we get wrong. And it helps us so much to receive that forgiveness, to know that we're loved by God always, whatever we do, but he does want us to come to him to ask for that forgiveness. And so as we move into this song, uh, if you feel during it that you need to have that quiet moment with God to say, by the way, I'm sorry about this or that. Can you forgive me and help me to change? Then know the promise of scripture is that he will forgive you. And so here's our first song. Oh 
Today's reading is taken from Romans 7, 4-6, a new international version. So my brothers and sisters, you also died to the law through the body of Christ, that you might belong to another, to him who raised from the dead, in order that we might bear fruit for God. For when we were in the realm of the flesh, the sinful passions aroused by the law were at work in us, so that we bore fruit for death. But now, by dying to what once bound us, we have been released from the law, so that we serve in the new way of the Spirit, and not in the old way of the written code. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thanks for our reading. At the beginning of this year, we looked at uh, a year verse. It, it's our church's way of just having a particular thing to focus on across the year. And as we have this series that we're now into week four of, um, we're building on that to give it some foundations. Uh, the year verse uh, was from Ephesians 2.22. Uh, Paul speaking to community of various churches probably within the area around Ephesus in Western Turkey. In him, you are being built together to become a dwelling in which God lives by his spirit. And so over these weeks, we're trying to unpack that in this series uh, that we call Foundational Roots, about being built together to grow a dwelling for the Holy Spirit. What are the things that we need to consider as we look to how we grow together. Uh, a large part of this also is very, is very much in preparation for the changes that will happen later this year as we start to come out of the pandemic. And we wanna come out of it healthier than we went into it as our churches. It's been a tough year and uh, we've been given some opportunities to, to pull back a little bit, to dwell and ponder about what comes next. And I hope this series is something that's gonna help in that. And we started the Foundational Roots series with this verse from Ephesians 2, verse 10. It said, For we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. So there are some sort of purposes that are laid before us, uh, which was the point of week one as we unpacked uh, this concept of purpose, that once we know why we're here, once we know uh, why we live as a Christian, once we know why a church exists, uh, then we can start to figure our way out into now what do we do? And so these series are looking at the, the foundational roots, these foundational purposes of ourselves as disciples and of our churches. And it very much leads us this week into the topic of ministry or serving others, uh, but being enabled by the Spirit as we've recognized each week there's there's a biblical concept of of something to do with life like fellowship uh, and discipleship of the fact that we need to grow as christians we need to do that in a community with others to enable all sorts of things to happen as we work together to create something new in god's kingdom but ministry is very much about looking out for each other and so each week i've generally brought a verse that points at the practical side of the purpose and then the reading we have is generally picking up where the holy spirit uh, has his role in this particular area of church life and so um, i'll come to the part from the reading in a minute but peter wrote in his first letter in chapter four he wrote this above all love each other deeply because love covers over a multitude of sins offer hospitality to one another without grumbling each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms notice love is at the heart of this and we discovered as we looked at just that one word in the week on fellowship that its root is a, is a Greek word called agape and it's it's got a meaning more of service of, it, of the other as opposed to uh, filio, which is very much a, an affection, a brotherly or sisterly affection that, you know, of a liking for people. And definitely not the eros, which is the third uh, Greek word, which is very much more the sexual end of love. 
But agape is used almost entirely through scripture. And above all, love each other deeply. So even within that, there's a concept of serving each other, even though it's not obvious because we just have that one word, love. Above all, love each other deeply because love covers over a multitude of sins. It's an odd phrase that, isn't it? I think what it's meaning is that actually, as we grow in love for others, actually that our level of sin will decrease because we'll be transforming ourselves. As we heard last week, being transformed by the renewing of our minds, we, we transform ourselves to become more and more like Jesus as we grow as disciples. And as growing disciples, well, we should offer hospitality to one another without grumbling. Now, that might be that you have a particular gift of hospitality, hospitality of, of just inviting people into your home or of, of enabling them in many ways, in a very personal way. Or it could be the church. Actually, some churches aren't hospitable. That's a horrible thing to say, isn't it? But I would like to think all churches at their heart long to be hospitable, of welcoming any and all into their community. Whatever their background, whatever their state of discipleship, or whether they love Jesus or they don't yet know if they love Jesus, of just being hospitable to all. Now those, those are here in this set of verses, uh, but the one I particularly want to pick up on is verse 10. Each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others. Each of you. So that's not some of you, it's each of you, which means some, we, we all have something. Each of you should use whatever gift you have received, which again suggests we've all got some form of gift, some form of ability, which may be a supernatural one. There is a list, list of supernatural gifts in the Bible, or it might be a very practical gift. You might be really good at cooking, or you might be really good at uh, considering things and coming up with an idea and, you know, you might develop a, a little talk. Uh, whatever the gift is that you've got, actually each of us should use that gift to serve others. They're not for ourselves, they're for other people. And we do it as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. So if we're given a gift, if we're given an ability to do something, if we don't use it, well, that says something from us to the gift giver, doesn't it? If you think of Christmas, if someone gave you a gift and you, and you took the beautifully gift-wrapped gift and you went, well, thank you very much, that's lovely, and then put it down to one side, they're going to be confused, aren't they? Is he going to open it? Is he, what does he think of it? I spent a long time choosing that toaster. You long that they're going to use it. So it's... We, re we, we use the gifts we received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace. God lovingly gives us the ability to do varied things. And there it is at the end, in its various forms. We're not all the same. We all do different things. And we re recognise that much, very much in the fellowship talk, didn't we? That we, we are all different, but actually as the body of Christ, we have to come together to form that body for the very specific one that's needed in our own locality. And now, where the Bible talks about why the, the Holy Spirit is crucial for us in this, uh, in this purpose. Uh, so I've taken a, a part of Romans chapter seven, but I've, uh, which we've had as our reading, and I've taken verses four and six, which are here, and just pulled them together a bit, just to make it a more, a slightly simpler thing to read. Paul sometimes is a little complicated in the way he puts his sentence structures, so hopefully this makes it a little simpler. So, my brothers and sisters, you also died to the law through the body of Christ in order that we might bear fruit for God. By dying to what once bound us, we have been released from the law so that we serve in the new way of the Spirit, not in the old way of the written code. Let's just think about this for a second. So my brothers and sisters, so this isn't just aimed at men, or it's all of us, so, so everyone in the church. You died to the law through the body of Christ. There's this concept of uh, the Holy Spirit coming to the church at Pentecost and dwelling with the Spirit throughout its entire history until the end of time when Jesus comes again, that enables us to put aside the law and, it, and the image given is of a, of a, sto of a heart of stone that's replaced with a heart of flesh, that we, we know and feel the right things to do. 
and we don't need a written code as much as was required before the Holy Spirit was available to everyone. And so we died to the law through the body of Christ because most of us have come to Jesus through a church in one form or another. The body of Christ, another name for the church worldwide and locally. And so where we've come to find Jesus, where he's drawn us so that we could learn more about him, is almost undoubtedly for 99.9% .9 of people through a church and therefore we died to the law through the body of Christ. In order that, here's a, a why uh, pointer. Why were we drawn to God? Why, why did a church encourage us to learn something of Jesus? Why have I found that I've got this hunger to discover more about Jesus? Why have I got this hunger to be part of a group of people? Well, it's in order that we might bear fruit for God. This is his world and, and we talk of uh, God's mission to the world, that it's, we take part in that. He, he lovingly invites us to be part of his mission to his world, to bring healing and reconciliation, both with each other and with him. And so we die to the law through the body of Christ in order that we might bear fruit for God. And by dying to what once bound us, we have been released from the law so that. See, the, in order that's and the so that's and the so's and therefore's, the, these are crucial parts when we read our, our Bibles. We've been released from the law so that we serve in the new way of the spirit and not in the old way of the written code. It's our, our introduction to Jesus, our, our recognition of the body of Christ drawing us closer to God was in order that uh, we might bear fruit so that we serve. But in a new way of the Spirit. And so when we heard Peter saying that each of you should use whatever gift you've received to serve others, it's to be in the new way of the Spirit. And we can draw those two thoughts together into a single sentence. Um, you could define ministry as serving in the new way of the spirit using whatever gift you've received. We all have the ability to serve in one way or another. And it's always about the other. And I, I personally feel there are different ways of considering ministry. Some people spend a long time trying to figure out what, what is my purpose? And sometimes there's not one big overarching one. There's not a big call to, to go and be a missionary in Papua New Guinea or something. It's lots of little moments in life, I think, for the vast majority of people. And so I, I look at them very much in this way, that um, a form of ministry in the new way of the Spirit could be as simple as just fill, fulfilling an immediate need. When someone says, could you help me with... Well, actually, that love part of us, that growing part of us, that part of being a disciple, the agape, the serving part of us. Well, we need a reason to say no rather than a reason to say yes. If we have the time to be able to help with something that's a short term need. Then actually, our first answer probably should be yes, not now I'll think about it or no. But yes, there's, so there are immediate needs, but they tend to be short lived and, and uh, easily fulfilled and then we move on to whatever we're doing with the rest of our life. And then there are slightly longer term ones that we, we just know actually we have the ability to help in that. You, you, might, you might play the guitar, for instance, uh, and think, you know, actually, I, I could help with the worship in church. Or you might know you get on really well with children and you might think, you know, I, I know I could help with the kids for a while. I don't know if I could do it for a, two or three years, but I know I could help in this interim period. Or, or you might know that you've, you've just got a heart for the poor. And, uh, you know, when the food bank needs some support or, or the soup run needs some assistance, then those might be the things that you think, actually, I'll try that for a while. I'll, I'll see how that goes. But I, I know I can help and I'll join in with that. Or there may be something that you're more guided to. I, I don't mean in terms of lifelong, but actually 
you see there's a need in, or, or you're, you have a need that's revealed to you and you think, oh, that, I think I should be involved in that. And so th there's that sort of ministry where you, you just feel a bit of a pull. And then there's the last one, which I think is the one that folk actually get stuck on when we look at this topic, that there is something perfect that we need to discover that we need to fulfill our lives doing. And the thing is, if we all did uh, what I would call the odd things in the kingdom of God, uh, a bit like what I do, or, or missionary work in Central Africa or whatever, if we all did that stuff, the world wouldn't work. So we're not all called to what many people call Christian ministry. I, I think everything we do in serving others is ministry. And I say people get hung up on it because they, they quite often think, well, I won't do anything else until I discover what my calling is. And I think for the majority of people, there is not a big overarching calling. There are these summary of immediate needs of knowing that you can help of, of something you're feeling guided to, to be part of. And in doing those, actually, you might then discover something a little more permanent. And so the, the search for ministry is one that I, I get asked about quite a lot. But I'm not overly convinced it's there as a, as a big thing for everyone. The world just wouldn't work without it. Um, we as a church, you know, we know we need some musicians. We know we need some people to set up to start learning uh, and training to do a, a simpler version of what I do, of being able to lead a service or maybe being able to preach. We know we have these needs coming before us. We know we're gonna need people to come back and enable our children and young people's ministries to restart. These are all, th all things where there may be some immediate needs or just knowing that you can help or actually you might feel a little bit of a pull towards it. And quite often it's in starting and trying uh, that we discover whether it's something that is for us or not. And so ministry is very much, um, it's built into us because we love each other, but it's also enabled by the Spirit as he leads and guides us. And he's not gonna ask us to do phenomenal things immediately. If, if you can play guitar, for instance, and you, and you think, well, I might, I, I might join with the music ministry. He's not gonna immediately say, right now, I need you to stand at the front, I need you to sing, I need you to play phenomenally fast upbeat songs on that guitar that you've not picked up for three years, he's going to say, would you sit, stand in the background and join with the others? I'll give you the gifts as you need them, but see what I mean? When we looked at fellowship, we looked at the body of Christ, that we need uh, our varied gifts to come together and, and God in his wisdom enables us in different ways so that we are a perfect community to fulfill the overarching purpose of that community as we reach out into the world. Uh, this week I've been, for other reasons, I've been attracted to this image, which is of Galitha Falls in Cornwall. And Galitha Falls uh, are at the end of a beautiful walk through a woodland stroll alongside a, a it's one of the prettiest rivers I've, I've had the opportunity to walk on. It's not a big river, it's just beautiful. Um, and if you ever get the opportunity when this whole virus thing falls away to go down and park in its car park at one end, it's very easy to access. Uh, it's quite flat. So, uh, you know, I'd recommend it. Anyway, coming back to the picture. I, I, I was using it for a different reason this week, but it's, it's made me think about the, uh, the ecosystem that God has created. But in the context of the church, we've used the body of Christ image that Paul used, and I'm... I'm very aware that for some of us, we might think, well, I, I don't want to be a whole hand. I, you know, that feels far too much like a responsibility. And, and I hated it when Tim said, if the foot doesn't turn up, the body limps, because, well, I don't want that level of responsibility. I don't want to have that much things, that much to do. And an ecosystem is a much softer, more organic uh, type of idea, isn't it? And as I looked at this picture, I, I could see the river flowing through and look, it's constantly flowing and it has power as it flows through. It's like the spirit feeding the entire ecosystem. 
of the church. That there's a dwelling for the spirit in this ecosystem. And those trees have got roots. We've talked about foundational roots. Those trees have got roots that go deep into that water and they're fed all the time. And, and, there's, and those roots are enabling trees to grow that enable the birds to live, that enables the lichen to grow, that enables the amphibians, the little frogs and newts to thrive on the sides, that enable the fish in the river, that it's all enabled. And some have a lifelong service and you'll see there there's one that's fallen over you know we we don't do things forever but we have a purpose while we're here i hope as you spend some time today maybe contemplating uh you know what can i do for god's kingdom it might be in your church it might be in the community it might not be yet because there are practical reasons why we can't yet get out and do stuff. But what can you do for your church? What might be an area of ministry that you could help in a little, that you could fulfill an immediate need? It might be a bit of a service that actually you know you could probably do for a little longer. What might you be able to do for your church? Next week, we're going to look at the topic of mission, which in sometimes is aligned with ministry. And particularly if we have a ministry within the community, then there's something missional in that as well. But we'll pick up on that next week. I hope it's been helpful. In our song that's uh, coming now, it's, it's a slightly modified version. I, that sometimes annoys people, so I'm very wary of using it. Uh, Be Thou My Vision. Uh, but this is one using lyrics that were amended by a band called the Wren Collective, and it's sung for us again by the Soul Survivor Church. But I, th I think it's helpful for us when we consider our purposes, when we consider that we're being led by God, that the Holy Spirit is part of who we need to become. It says, you are my wisdom. You are my true word. I ever with you and you with me, Lord. You're my great father and I'm your true son. You dwell inside me. Together we're one. You dwell inside me. Together we're one. A song of fellowship, a song of being fed, a song of recognising the greatness of our father and of his wisdom. Shall
praise your my inheritance now and always you and you only the first in my heart my king of heaven my treasure Loving Heavenly Father, as we join together in prayer, we thank you that you are here with us and we are united in you. Help us to shape our needs and concerns into prayers, knowing that you are interested in every detail of our lives. As we look around at the world, we're thrilled at its beauty, but sad at the ways we have abused it. Help us to use wisely what you have entrusted to us. Shine your light into the dark places of the world where there is political unrest, injustice, war, persecution. Be close to the vulnerable, the dispossessed and the broken. In our own country, Lord, we pray for our government and for all those tasked with finding the best way forward over the next few weeks and months. Give them wisdom and clear thinking in their decision making. And in our local community, we pray for those we know and love who are going through difficult times, who need your healing touch in body, mind or spirit. Help us to reach out to them with your love. We especially thank you for those reaching out in love through the Feast of Fun to so many families in the city. We pray for the families in our own neighbourhood who will be receiving food parcels this week, ready for half term. May each family be blessed and touched with the warmth of your love. Thank you that preschool has been able to keep going this term. Please give the staff rest and restoration during half term, that they might return freshed and energised. Finally, we thank you, Lord, for the way you speak to us through your creation. Thank you for the joy of seeing snowdrops, crocuses, tulips and daffodils, Signs that spring is on its way. Thank you for the hope we have in you. Hope that frees us from the need to predict the future and allows us to live in the present with the sure knowledge that you will never leave us but will fulfil the deepest needs of our hearts as we trust in you. Thank you that tomorrow is safely hidden in your love. Amen. And now, let's say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. 
Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Thank you for those prayers, Sue. Well, we're almost at the end and thank you for having been with us today. Uh, next week, we're going to be looking at the topic of mission. So do please join us for that. And uh, don't worry, it's not going to be persuading you to go out knocking on doors and asking people if they love Jesus. For some people, that is actually what they do need to do. But very few of us are called to mission in that way. And I, I encourage you to join us next week to learn how it, it is one of the purposes of us as growing disciples to be involved in enabling other people to discover what we know. It would be dreadfully unfair, wouldn't it, for us to keep it to ourselves? And so a bit like uh, the pandemic and the availability of vaccines, it's crucial that we share and don't just keep it to ourselves. I'd love to say a prayer of blessing before a song. And the song that we're going to sing, by the way, is, is called In Christ Alone. And, and it is in Christ alone that we discover so many things. In Christ alone, my hope is found. He is my light, my strength, my song, this cornerstone this solid ground, firm through the fiercest drought and storm. Jesus is a, is a safe harbour for us. He's somewhere we can put down our roots to be fed by the Holy Spirit. He's going to hold us strong there. He's trustworthy. And so before we sing, perhaps I can say a prayer of blessing to take us off into this week. Father, we, we thank you so much for the gift of the Holy Spirit. We thank you so much for sending your son who had to die to enable us to have sin left behind, but who rose again and ascended to, to bring us hope for our lives now and in the future. And so we ask for that blessing of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit, today and always. Amen. And here's our last song. I hope to see you next week. Stay safe.